Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular board meeting. Uh, the time is 7 p.m. on June 15th. May we rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we please have a roll call vote. A roll call. Commissioner Bendy. Here. Commissioner Bow. Here. Commissioner Grau. Here. Commissioner Halting. Here. Commissioner LaDuke. Here. Commissioner Matza. Here. Commissioner Tunnel. Here. Thank you. Uh, would anyone like to amend, add, or delete an item to the current agenda? Seeing none, uh, would anyone from the public like to comment on non agenda items? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I move to approve the regular board meeting minutes of Thursday, May 18th, 2023. Is there any discussion? I, I had emailed uh, Mary Beth with uh, um, an edit. It's the part where I, and I already emailed it to her, so she has the verbiage, but it was the part when I asked for the audit report to be provided a little bit earlier. Um, and it said that it be made available to the board in a more timely manner. I didn't mean to imply that staff did not make it timely. I just need more time to read it because I have kids and I read packets at nine o'clock at night. So I have it changed to Commissioner Holton requested that if available, the audit report be provided the week before the meeting. Ooh, I have a typo there, Mary Beth. I, I'm, I'm, the audit report <laughs> be provided the week before the meeting when it's discussed so commissioners have more time to look at it. So I just changed the sentence so I sound less bossy. <laughs> um, and it's and more accurate. I just need more time to read the, read the audit report. I did make report. the change for a second. No, so that's it. That's it. So as amended. Right? As amended. Yeah. We get a second? I'm sorry. You. As amended. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bow. Here. Commissioner Grau. Here. Commissioner Halting. Yes. Commissioner LaDuke. Yes. Commissioner Matza. Yes. Commissioner Bendy. Yes. Commissioner Tunnel. Yes. Thank you. And then I move to approve the destruction of verbatim recordings of closed session meetings as identified in Exhibit A and direct Park District staff to destroy said verbatim recordings as soon thereafter as practical. Any discussion? So, thank you. All of the um, the ones that you see on the exhibit, um, we have the board has approved those minutes, and there this is permitted under the act. Is there anything I missed? Anybody in there miss it? Any questions? All right. We have a roll call vote. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Halting? Yes. Commissioner LaDuke? Yes. yes. Commissioner Matza? Yes. Commissioner Bendy? Yes. Commissioner Bow? Yes. Commissioner Grau? Yes. Commissioner Tunnel? Yes. Thank you. And then on to report of park officials. Uh, my president report tonight. Uh, just wanted to thank the staff for a nice ribbon cutting tonight for the pickleball uh, crowd that was nice to host them at Woodland. And thank you for all the hard work that's gone into that project over the last few years. So uh, we do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, attorney report. Thank you for being here. All right. So um, just a couple overview um, comments. I just, it's summer. <laughs> so we've had quite the uh, activity in the parks already this summer. And we've had a lot of um, 
had a couple letters going out, discipline letters. We've had um, people teaching illegally in the parks. We've had a lot of action up on top of the sled hill. Um, so we have hired additional security and um, this is a practice that we um, have worked out with. It works out very nicely with the Park Ridge Police, the off-duty police, and they take shifts, and we have um, funds in the budget for this, and then we just target the areas where the kids are going. Um, so Centennial seems to be the hot spot so far, um, and so it's been working out. They've been out there actually just since Saturday, um, the police. So we're getting daily reports, and um, it's definitely been effective. Um, so hopefully they'll get a mes the message that, um, they can't be out there after dark doing the things that they want to do. Um, so uh, camps have started this week, and um, also the pools are open, as we know. So it's been great. The staff has all worked very hard, and I wanted to thank all the departments for all their work and the preparations for getting ready for the thousands of you know people in our programs and at the pools and in the parks. Um, really proud of the trainings and just the hours and hours and preparation. Um, I don't think you know people appreciate what goes on behind the scenes. I know the board does um, in, in terms of getting ready for this. So um, it, the numbers speak for themselves in terms of you know the the popularity of our programs and our once the weather warms up again um, the pools. So it, it's been a Great summer so far. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, Marianne this evening. Um, Marianne Lucars is our um, last meeting. I can't believe it. Um, she's been with the district for 22 years. And just to thank her publicly, we'll have plenty of time um, to also thank her um, more in depth. But thank you, Marianne, for all of your um, dedication to the Park District and everything you've done um, for us. Mm -hmm. You can st still come to the meetings when you're bored on their <laughs> Um I do not have anything else. We also have the marketing report and uh, marketing public relations and human resources. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Or Margaret is here as well. Just want to remind everybody that um, mm. we uh, have a concert this Friday, tomorrow, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. in the park. Um, if anybody wants to sell raffle, I think oh. we have lots of help with raffle the, tickets tomorrow. But ne next, uh, week, yes, the, the grilling is the weekend. Next weekend, mm -hmm. the twenty third is the grilling. So if we haven't heard from anybody on the board that can still help, just let us know. John, you're going to be there. Thank you. Give them the hamburgers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Welcome. And now for finance. Thank you, President Tunnel. Uh, we have a written finance report tonight, a uh, monthly report, and then a couple of uh, ink resolutions, but I'll turn it over to Superintendent Larson to start us off. Terry. Terry's always got my back. Um, it's on page 15, and as Gail was mentioning, summer. Summer also hits uh, the finance department pretty hard. We have a lot of invoices that need paying over the summer. Lots of fun, expense, er, fun expenses that the rec staff is purchasing, bubble wands and things like that. Um, so it's always fun to pay invoices this time of year. We get to see what everyone's doing out in the park. We've also spent a significant amount of time training the pool cashiers. That's um, an important part of our preparation for the summer. Make sure that uh, they're ready for um, their job because oftentimes the pool cashiers, this is their first job. So we wanna be sure that they feel confident in what they're doing and they know that they have our support and we're there to answer any questions. We also, during the summer, will go to the pools um, and audit to make sure the cashiers um, are doing what they need to do, and we um, also do that so that they can ask us questions. We found last year, if we show our faces there, they're more willing to tell us how things are really working and we can continue to make improvements. So that's been a really um, fun part of May and the beginning of summer for us. I don't know um, if you have any other questions you'd like to ask about the narrative, I'm happy to answer them. 
I just appreciated like the extra context that we got in here about like what was driving like which programming was driving revenues. I just wanted to say thank you for providing that context. Oh, in the report. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's good for me to kind of start digging into the numbers and and so if you don't mind reading it, I'll keep writing it. No, so. I like <laughs> it. I'm into it. Okay. We we I could usually like look and try to piece it out from the longer report, but it's nice for it to just be like summarized and put in front of my face. Great. Well, I'll keep doing that. And it's it's also I like to do that too because it's a way for us to celebrate the programs. Also, like it was great to see. It's been wonderful to see Stage School um, so successful and really building back to even beyond pre-pandemic levels. So that's a fun one for me to see. I also wanted to mention, um, this is not in my narrative, but uh, we will be, um, I will be talking to you next month about our natural gas bid. So our last bid was in 2022 in our current con or I'm sorry, 2020 and our current um, contract ends uh, August 31st of 23. Uh, this is a, this is a um, simple bid. We don't need to go to an RFP. Um, so I've reached out to three companies two of which I've heard back from. I've been asking a lot of questions because this is all new to me also. And the plan is I'll put together um, some um, simple guidelines for them so we can compare apples to apples. And one thing that they both suggested I do is I pick one day for them to bid on because gas prices are very volatile. And if I'm comparing them on different days, it's not a true comparison. I'm also planning to, or we're planning to ask them for both um, a traditional pricing and then carbon offset pricing um, so we can make some decisions about that. And I learned today talking to someone that with carbon offset pricing, we can also pick a percentage of how much we want to offset. So um, I'll be able to give you more information about that. When we went to um, last did this in 2020, there were two meetings in July. So what Sandra did is do a first presentation with an um, agreement and about the second meeting. Um, we won't be able to do that now because we only have one meeting. But what I will do is put together a memo similar to what Sandra did for that first meeting and send it out to you so you can start looking at that and, and thinking about the process a little more. Any questions about that? Okay, great, thank you. Thanks, Sharon. I had a question further on, so you said the narrative, but can I ask you? Well, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, I meant numbers too. Everything. Okay, the, uh, this is a rando question okay. that I was gonna email, but I forgot. What's the difference between a US Treasury bill and a US Treasury note? Um, I, I was like, I never noticed those two, I think, because. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can answer that confidently right now. But there is a difference. Th I think there is a difference, but I think it's a detailed difference, so oh. I'd be happy to. Okay. Yeah, I, sh I was going to email and I forgot. That's okay. Thank you. I always appreciate your emails. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Awesome. Thanks. I'll wait up here because I know we've got some banking stuff coming up. Thank you, Superintendent Larson. Um, let's see where. Yeah. Um, I move to approve the payment vouchers in the total amount of $549,257.07. Can I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Any questions or discussions about the payment vouchers? No? Okay. Mary Beth, you want to do a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Halting? Yes. Commissioner LaDuke? Yes. Commissioner Matza? Yes. Commissioner Bendy? Yes. Commissioner Bow? Commissioner Grau? Yes. Commissioner Tunnel? Yes. Thank you. Um, should I do the motion first, then we can chit chat? All right. Um, next, I move to adopt the fifth third multi product resolution as presented and to authorize the president to execute and deliver such documents. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion about this? Questions? So, what this is for is because we um, had to remove Commissioner Coin off of. Um, our banking information and add Commissioner Matt. So we had to do this resolution. So this is from the bank and this is what they need um, with just to um, have all your signatures up there. Sound good? Okay. Anything, anyone else? 
No. All right. Mary Beth, can we get a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner LaDuke? Yes. Commissioner Matza? Yes. Commissioner Bendy? Yes. Commissioner Bow? Yes. Commissioner Grau? Yes. Commissioner Halting? Yep. Commissioner Tunnel? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, I move to authorize and direct the board to execute and deliver the fifth third bank change in authorized account signers forms as presented. Second. Um, thank you. Um, any discussion or do you want to talk about yeah, this? Yeah, this is a similar thing. We need to get all of your signatures in your proper roles now. So because we also change um, roles, we need to make sure the bank has that account. And we want we want a higher credit limit depending on our role. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? No. All right, Mary Beth, roll call, please. Commissioner Matza. Yes. yes. Commissioner Bendy. Yes. Commissioner Bow. Yes. Commissioner Grau. Yes. Commissioner Halting. Yes. Commissioner Leduke. Yes. Commissioner Tunnel. Yes. Thank you. And I just want to say to Superintendent Larson and the Accounting Department, I appreciate all the work we've been doing the last couple weeks uh Susie, lucy and uh angela you guys have all been awesome and i've been trying to ask questions and i know uh, hopefully i'll get everyone's names down and i'll figure out like who does what and who has authority to do stuff but i appreciate the time thanks yeah, well, we welcome your questions so um yeah and everyone's been um really happy that you're asking questions that means you're interested <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, if I ask too many, please let someone let me know. Okay. Right? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um, well, that's it for finance. I'll turn it over to Commissioner LaDuke for recreation. And I'll turn it over to Superintendent Armour. Thank you very much. My report begins on page 41. We've officially transitioned from the school year programs to summer programs at the end of Beyond the Bell and preschool graduation. Um, the dance recital went very well. Um, it was, we also transitioned that back to Maine East. It hasn't been there in many years. Um, so it was, you know, bumps along the way, but it went very well. Programs across the board throughout my report, um, for the most part, we continue to see growth um, and the youth programs, just uh, sports programs, just continue to amaze me. The adult leagues um, started as well, and the co-ed volleyball has a very small um, group, a uh, league playing, but it's, uh, that's exciting. We haven't seen that in years, so hopefully we can try and grow that back. Um, back in the day, there were um, a lot of teams, but it's been, as you can see, quite a while. Mm -hmm. The wonderful weather in May, um, you know, we saw the results at the driving range, definitely. We had a, a rough opening in April, but May, you know, kick things into high gear. The whole Centennial campus is very busy with many activities, events, and trips at the activity center. Um, the fitness center also remains very busy, even though we sometimes see a lot more cancellations or holds in the summer, um, you know, like when people move outdoors um, to exercise, but still doing very well. And we're creeping slowly closer to our pre-pandemic membership numbers, which is great. As I already mentioned, the pools are in full swing. May was very busy with trainings and really started out with a bang with the great weather. And um, obviously you can see with the pool pass numbers, that was when, when we're anticipating the nice weather and opening weekend, we definitely see that um, last minute type of um, the pool pass memberships coming through. And again, as I already mentioned, camps are in full swing starting this week. There's been a lot of trainings, parent meetings, communications, hiring up until the last minute as um, we always do, but we are fully staffed in all areas. So that's um, very exciting. Um, we did add, I think I mentioned this last month, we were looking to add a, an additional camp at Carpenter School, so we did find enough staff to do that. Um, unfortunately, not as many people are taking advantage of it as we had hoped, but it's been offered to anyone on a wait list. Um, so that camp will start next week because we didn't have enough. Um, cause I think we only had three people for last week. So anyone uh, who is on a wait list for that 
age group has been offered a full day camp. So we have that available. 20 kids in the afternoon? I got a couple. <laughs> yeah, one half day yeah. after uh, Worlds of Wonder. I'm sure my husband would be. I'm um, <laughs> yeah, so that we're... We're hopefully, you know, that now that we're seeing such a growth back in participation, we'll start out with offering that camp. Um, you know, the school district has been wonderful to work with. Um, so overall, we've had a great kickoff to summer. And in addition to the concerts, I also wanted to mention the craft fair this weekend at Oak Hill Saturday. Luckily, the rain has pushed off. So if you want to stop by and look for some lovely gifts for Father's Day, feel free. Or anything else. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions on the report. So I'm s I'm sorry if I missed it, but did you get through all the wait lists though, or, or is it just like a mismatch where like the people on the wait list aren't necessarily wanting to go into the right carpentry um, camp, or what's the many question? have declined because they either want to stay at a specific location okay. or are on multiple wait lists and are holding off okay. or don't really need the care and want to be in a specific camp. Okay. So we still have wait lists that, um, you know, right off the bat, we knew we weren't going to be able to accommodate yeah. because it's safe. Um, so like nature camp is always one that yeah. fills up right away and we just, unless someone drops. Um, the uh, Brookton Art Camp had a very large wait list and we actually offered for them to um, switch over to a school location, but they didn't have enough staff, and they're you know very comfortable in the space that they have. So those wait lists will just be a you know if somebody cancels, um, but yeah, really for the most part, based on space that we have, we've accommodated as many okay. people as we can, except for at the Brooklyn Art Camp. So next week, I think they said they had only have 15 kids on the wait list. Okay. Plenty of space for more. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I don't think there is a camp one where you can sign up like week by week or. Uh, I believe it's weekly or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday option. And I don't think the school district in Worlds of Wonder is down there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the what's the carpenter camp called? It's called Camp Carpenter. <laughs> I think they called it because it's. We started out with one of our larger um, wait wait lists, and it was the Want a Lot of Fun Camp. So they're calling okay. it Want a Lot of Fun East. <laughs> East. <laughs> I, yeah, and I think one of the issues is if you're dropping other kids off at a different location, the two location thing. Mm. So that's the you know the parent that I talked to. So yeah, they're pretty close. Um, yeah. Proximity. Yeah. Well, I sometimes a new idea take, takes a while to catch on, right? Like if they hear that it's as good as mm -hmm. everything else, you know, and not just second best. Mm -hmm. So I, um. I appreciate you <laughs> putting, um, you know, putting that together because then you, you yeah. do offer something, right? Yeah. No, I do too. Yeah. I do too. Every, everything. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to thank you for the garden gathering speaker series. I know that was like two years in the making. Unfortunately, they've both been on cardboard nice, but <laughs> I'm not going to complain I about it. I think we just took what they could give yeah, us at that point. After that's great, and I was glad to see there were 25 people because I've been bugging you for two years, and I was like, thank you people for showing up. <laughs> I actually moved it indoors because I guess it was very hard to hear the first I was wondering, um, so where is it? At your office, or where is it? <laughs> no, I think it's at the activity center. Right, because it was going to be, yeah. it was going to be, well, it was going to be at the gar the side of the garden, right? The first one was. They just couldn't hear the speaker that well, so. Um, well, I'm sad because is it the gardeners that are coming? Like, it, so we got to put the community in the community garden, and I understand, but now you moved it outside, so. Well, you know. I understand. Sometimes it doesn't work out as you anticipate, and. Yeah. I think yeah, everyone who was there. The was end of year festival or something with the whole community in the community garden. Just a, just an idea. Get produce and spring growing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Title, um, why did it change? And was there any feedback as to pro or con on the, the switch? 
Um, the location that we'd been in for a few years, we, we always, Maine East didn't have it available. Oh. Um, when we were looking. Oh, they were remodeling or something? So the yeah. first year it switched, we found this off-site location that was kind of far. So, yeah, um, but it was better than, you know, couldn't find anything else at the time was my understanding and recollection. Um, and they kept increasing the prices and the price increases would, I mean, it would have really, um, our yeah. cost of the okay. program would have increased significantly. Yeah. So yeah. last year, or the last year that we actually had it um, in person, so I guess that would have been 2019, yeah. we just did it because we didn't have time to research and, you know, okay. and so we, <laughs> yeah, it was a North Field financial or something. situation yeah. okay. and then we started you know, trying to really work with Maine East on okay. a time frame that would work. And then, of course, COVID. And yeah. Suddenly okay. Back in. And parents seem to like it better uh, back to East or? Yeah. It, you know, it's yeah. definitely, I, I think there's a lot of people that have aged out. So they yeah. don't really remember the sure. site that we were in. But it was a high score county. It was, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, good. But yeah, I think we received. Good. Mostly positive feedback from yeah. the parents. There were yeah. you know, some things behind the scenes that I think we have to work through just to yeah. have a new site and sure. give more space. Yeah. Um, for okay. Well, good. All right. It's nice to keep it yeah. local, more local, I think. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yes. All right. On to um, S Superintendent Wolf. Tell us your report. Thank you. Um, my report begins on page 50. And I will just say that Woodland Park is done. And that's all I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Mic drop and walk it off. <laughs> um, no, I, I would be happy. I, I don't know that I have anything else to highlight other than that in that area, but if anyone has any questions on my report, I'd be happy to answer any questions, so. Yes? Is it time to publicize the vandalism like we've done in the past? How did we do that in the past? We did a Yeah. Do you think that helped? I don't. It's very disheartening. Yeah. I, we, we were out there looking at those new bathrooms, and I'm like, here's a report for the, the brand new bathrooms next month. I'm yeah, so it's going to be sick. Yeah, I would agree. I would be as well. Pun not intended. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it did anything. So we'll work on that. You know, we'll get together and remember it. We have new video, blown up new couch. video cameras. <laughs> Did we have a couch at Woodland? Not anymore. Someone dropped off a couch and blew it up. Yeah, I mean, some someone walked it in across the park and pretty much took it a piece. I mean, it probably was really torn apart, although we've been finding a lot of fireworks um, on the grounds there, so it very likely could have been blown up as well. But, yeah. I mean, I you know, it. I think it's important to remind everybody that you know, un unfortunately, we see, you know, different levels of vandalism and graffiti every day. I, I put the bigger things on here, but, I mean, every day someone on my team is, is wiping off someone's name that was written in marker on the top of a garbage can. It's minor. Or on the side of a slide on a playground. It's minor. It would, it would take us more work and effort and energy than it's worth to, to remind and, and create a process for them to communicate that all upwards in, a, in an orderly fashion, right? So that all doesn't show up on these things, but it happens. But the bigger ones do, and they do show up. So, um, and, and it has been a lot, but it, it's, and it's, not, it's not okay, and we do keep up with it the best we can. And so I think, you know, the idea of maybe a Facebook post um, might not be so bad. But, um, you know, we, we have been getting more and more you know, cooperation from the police on some of these things. We've, our relationship with them is definitely um, developed. I will tell you that uh, Commander Gene Weir and 
um, interim uh, chief Campworth are very, very um, amenable and, and communicative with us. We have a lot of conversations and they're very helpful with these things. Uh, they've got some you know, signage out to help with some of the things that have been going on with off-leash dogs in our park. So they, we've definitely seen a lot of you know, conversations. I, we had a meeting with them to kind of talk through some of these things and they're very, very responsive and proactive and helpful with these. Right. So I, I think that from my perspective is, is positive and a change and thing that something that's been different at least this year already than I've seen in the past years. So, um, so we'll see, but it, it's hard. You can't be everywhere all at the same time. And that's, that's the challenge. So we're, we're just, you know, so. And is your new employee, um, Lauren working? Your office, under your office, or? Um, so she is a part-time, technically remote uh, employee because we don't have an office space for her. So she does spend um, some time here at Wollers Hall because we have some room uh, upstairs for her, and she does come by our office and meet with Jennifer. She technically reports to Jennifer Minier. Um, so we love to meet her. Yeah, and we yeah, definitely will. She. Her house, so. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. She said she'll come to the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, we know that, and we will definitely bring her to a board meeting if we will meet her. But, um, and she's, you know, spending time right now getting around, you know, to the, all the different facilities, getting to know everybody. Obviously, it's a, it's a lot to come into a place and to have to understand what you do, where you're at, who the people are, what they're, and, and then to start to pick apart some of those things to see, you know, what those are. And so she's been meeting with Jennifer very regularly and talking with everybody. We sat down and talked through some initiatives, and I know she's working on a lot of different things right you now. You save so. us for last, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll get you that time. Yeah, yeah. Yep, we'll get you there. <laughs> Any other questions on our report? If not, I will move on to the Hinkley Park um, renovation discussion. Um, there's a memo on uh, page 53. Um, <clears throat> just reminding the board that we did receive a um, OSLAD grant for Hinkley Park. Uh, the project is out to bid uh, and that we do have the bid opening um, on June 26th. Um, at that point, we're going to review it for accuracy, and then we plan to have this at the board meeting in July for uh, recommend for approval if uh, the bids are all um, within our budget. Uh, we, we do want to remind everybody that when we planned out this time frame, it's, it's possible that we might not see good bids uh, numbers. It's not always wonderful numbers at this time of year, but we wanted to see what happened, and we'll adjust from there. So um, we can make those decisions as it comes up. So. Um, but we wanted to give it our best effort to get that project moving and going, and um, we'll be very hopeful in, that we will be able to be moving forward on that project. Um, but is there any questions about that project or the scope of work or anything related to that project as we're talking about that? It's just one bid? Yeah. It is, yeah, one bid, yep. Yeah, it's being bid out as a, as a um, uh, like a prime contract, so it would be one bid for everything. It's not quite big enough to do multiple um, prime contracts like we'll end up doing with Oakton. So, sorry. If there aren't enough bids, then you can put it off till another time in this in the yeah. year. So, if we didn't have any bids, or even if we had one bid and the and the, the bid came in over budget, we can reject the bid. So, um, we do have that option. But it's you know, we've had scenarios where we do get just one bid. In fact, just at our last meeting with Northeast Park, we had just one bid, but it was within budget. We checked the references. They did, you know, had good references and all that checked out. So it made sense. So, um, and, you know, part of what our architect does, um, we're working with Upland on this one, is that they're reaching out and talking to, um, you know, contractors that they work with on similar projects to, to kind of drum up and generate interest in the project and let them know that this project's out there. And it gets publicized in you know all the different places that these companies go to look for the work. So it really just comes down to how many contractors are out there looking for work to bid on right now, or are they too busy doing the work that there is 
right now. So it's kind of a balance of like how much work is in the market and how busy are they? What's their interest level? So, and how does it fit into their mix? Maybe they're interested in bidding it and they said, okay, this is good because it'll be queued up and ready for me to start right at the end of the projects that I have and I'll get a start on it this year and wrap it up at the beginning of next year and it fits out just perfectly and it kind of gives them an early jump on next season and so it might be just right for them. So it might be kind of a unique thing for them and different than what anybody else does. So you might see great bids on this one instead of what we're thinking might be bad bids. So taking a shot. So, yep. Any other questions on Hinkley Park? Um, if not, then I guess we'll move along to the South Park uh, cell tower lease agreement. Um, so the memo was on uh, page 54. Um, this is something that actually comes up every so often and usually it, it takes up a decent amount of my time and a couple of meetings and some conversations and some of Gail's time and, and other people's time. We go through some terms and negotiations and, and then somewhere it just kind of fizzles out. Um, this one didn't do that. So it's, um, it actually, we had some conversations and um, it was, this time was with our existing care, um, you know, owner of um, the cell tower that we have where they have an interested party, AT&T as it is, um, that wants to co-locate on that tower. Um, they reached out and asked if they could do that. They were looking to go into the city for uh, permits um, to move forward with this project and uh, they needed our uh, approval as the landowner. Um, I reminded them that their agreement was almost over and it seemed silly for them to look for that without you know, addressing that first. And by the way, we probably wanna look at the terms of the agreement as we're looking at this. And so, you know, we started that process. Um, I did receive some guidance from uh, Ansel Glink uh, as we went through that and had a little bit of negotiation on the terms and, and met what uh, Ansel Glink said was, um, you know, favorable terms in this market for this type of agreement. So, um, which are what are, is described here below. Um, whereas the existing agreement still runs its course, but at the conclusion of the existing agreement, um, the new agreement picks up and at that point, the escalations instead of being based on the CPI uh, transition over to 3% annually. Um, and then for any future tenant um, that we have, which this would start now um, with AT&T, for example, uh, we would either get 40% of their license fee or $250 a month. And so in this situation, 40% of the license fee happens to be more than the $250 a month. And so that's where it, um, I think I identified it as about $900. Yeah, about $900 a month. So um, so we would be seeing an increase in, in our um, monthly revenues for the project once this is, or for this site once this project is completed. Um, plus they were giving a courtesy fee for some of the extra work that we'll have, you know, just processing this um, going forward. Um, and it's kind of a certainty thing. I know when uh, we were talking with Karen about this, their finance likes it because it's a certain revenue that comes in, you know, perpetually for, or not perpetually, but for a very long time every month. And she said they're really good. They just pay the bill. <laughs> it's just, it's there. <laughs> so, um, so, I mean, the only one big difference with this, as you can see on the second, you know, page of the document is that currently it's a stealth tower. It's used as one of the light poles for um, the Kalina baseball field at South Park. And so with the stealth tower, um, they were able to fit the, the technology within the pole. So it's kind of like a monopole design. Now with the technology they've got for uh, 5G, my understanding is that that's not really possible. And so they do have to have an exterior um, array mounted onto this. Um, as you can see, I mean, we already have light poles out there and, and other cell towers, especially the ones on near the, um, like the D road um, train station has a couple different towers over there. Um, so it's, it's not an uncommon site. I know it's not the most attractive looking thing in the world, but it's definitely not an uncommon site. So. Um, so that would be kind of the one, you know, biggest, you know, thing here that would be changing with that particular um, situation. So, 
Um, so there, and the, where this is at right now is, is I'm just having this open for discussion, uh, give the board a chance to kind of absorb this, ask any questions that you have, uh, understand that this has um, been reviewed on our end uh, with Ansel Glink and internally with the Park District and that we've uh, given it to them. Their attorneys are, are drawing up the agreement so that it should be ready to bring back to the board for approval at the July 20th um, board meeting is my understanding. So. So with that, any questions? Two questions. One, is there a carrier using it now? Yeah, um, Sprint PCS is on so it. So they'll right continue? Now. They'll continue to use it, yes. The old technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is really out there, but I know nothing about 5G, but I know there's a person in my neighborhood who is all up in arms. There is a 5G tower near our schools. Is that total conspiracy stuff that people are talking about? I am not educated enough in that, so. You should know if it's safe or not. I mean, I, I don't know that it's my fault, but, um, you know, we're going to probably hear about it from somebody. Or at least, an, at least have an official. I, I, I've, I mean, I've been through this a couple of different times, and I've been to city council meetings in the past on behalf of the park district a couple of different times. Yeah. Um, for this at various different parks over my years here and I've I've heard all the different ranges of it and it it, it goes from one side to the other about whether or not the cellular technology is dangerous it's going to cause cancer or going to do all the different things and it 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 it, it kind of reminds me of a, of a crumb rubber discussion but it's also one of those things that if you're it's a technology that we all carry around with us as well so I I don't know that I'm a person that could have an opinion, and I'm not so sure that the park district would want to take an opinion on whether we think it's safe or not, but we've already had this technology in our parks for a while. Oh, we do? I don't know that, I mean, we have cellular. 5G. I don't know that it's 5G or not, if that's more or less, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think we should say we don't know that it's not safe. I mean, if the we board, don't yeah. We don't know. I mean, documentation somewhere that says it is okay that's the answer that's the answer. There is no, we have, we're not aware of any formal study proving that it is safe. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't necessarily believe it, but I know it's a thing in our community and I think we have to have the answer. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that I had heard that, but I'm just, I don't. I'll tell you who's going to bring it up. Okay. Yep. Um, Terry, um, how many other cell towers do we have in our parks? This is the only one. This is the only one. Okay. Yeah, we had at some time looked at um, two other ones in other locations, but this is the only one. If they fell through? They just, they didn't ever happen. I remember, wasn't there one at uh, Northwest for a North, while? Northeast yeah. and Centennial were both. Centennial too, okay. Terry said we get approached now and then on these okay. things, and we'll get, an, uh, we'll get a yeah. statement, you know, mm -hmm. just Kurt said, we'll get that. And I, I don't think we yeah. have to push it out. No, right, right, right. Yeah, we'll have it available. We know what yeah, we have an answer. Is. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. I think those I think those conversations have calm, I mean I know they're still out there but okay. I think those have calmed down since the you know when these cell towers first came out and the expansion of them came out you know you heard a lot more of this but I think people are more comfortable understanding that the studies have been done by these companies right they've spent a lot of money on it and they're, I mean 5g is like you know normal now right where before it was not I think the and particular concern is that, you know, either by a school or by a park where kids are. So um, I appreciate that. I just think we yeah. just need to have our ducks in a row. Agree. Thank you. Any other questions? Or, yeah. A quick question. Page one, it says new uh, lease 3% annual escalation. Page two, first paragraph says 2%. Is that because of the sublet original? Or? Yeah. So that's, it's, it's our Ours is, um, we have a 3% annual escalation, but it's 2% if the rent 
if we're not at the rent, so their rent will be the 2%. So the 900 will be 2%, but our rent is the 3%. So the 33361 amount goes up by 3%. The sublet amount goes up by 2% because that's their what their agreements are with their carriers. Okay. That I read it right. Thank you. Yeah. So get it, both? We, both? You, we get both, but so that yeah, that 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 actually I had that same conversation. I was like, wait, you missed this. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Moving on. Um, the last memo here, starting on page uh, 56, um, is... Um, on the Oakton artificial turf uh, recommendation, um, after the uh, the May fourth um, presentation on various different options, uh, we had obviously had a, a discussion there and a, and a couple of surveys uh, returned by the audience. Um, and at that point, um, we we kind of identified that there was two options to continue to look at a little bit. Um, the Pierce Select, which was the olive um, pits, ground olive pits uh, with cool play, um, and then standard crumb rubber with cool play. Um, and looking at that and, and considering those, um, it was felt that we needed to really follow through and, and dig into those a little bit more. Uh, Gail had asked that we followed up and talked to uh, the, the places that utilize those options. Um, not only the programming staff, the maintenance staff, but went and, and looked at these and um, and interacted with that. And so we, we put together um, our team of staff within the Oakton project that are going to be responsible for um, those areas. And so um, a group of us went out, um, scheduled a day, went out and talked to and met with people out at um, Woodridge who have an indoor facility that has the crumb rubber um, with the cool play and then went subsequently to Schaumburg, who has the um, Pure Select, which is the olive core uh, with the cool play on top. Um, and, you know, it, the, the, the primary discussion points were about, you know, usability and how these interacted. Did people, you know, did they feel like they, you know, were functional? Why did you make these decisions? Um, and just an overall just sense of how are these going to function for us? How do they play? Um, were people being injured where there were some concerns about, you know, the abrasiveness of um, the olive and how does that work out? Um, that was one that we specifically were asking at um, Schaumburg. And um, what we found was that um, really there was no concerns. Um, they have not had any complaints. They've got a number of, they've got a huge complex at Olympic Park in Schaumburg. And they started the transition uh, three years ago where they, took one section of fields and started to transition them to this. And so they've still got one that's the, um, the crumb rubber and they're not having any more or less injuries or issues or problems with abrasiveness um, and people getting scratched or scrapes or anything like that. Um, they have had um, some comments and it was actually our um, impression that the fields with the olive um, pits and the cool play actually f were a little more reminiscent of like regular grass because it wasn't as bouncy, um, which you get out of a out of a rubber um, crumb rubber field because it has a, a springiness to it that you don't see in grass. So, um, so with this and with those discussions and and with the the usability and and you know they had a lot of additional discussion when we were at the Woodridge. A facility that wasn't so much about that, that that conversation quickly turned into just other valuable discussions about you know just how they program the space how they divide the space other things that will be very valuable for us on other portions of of Oakton but not necessarily about the makeup of you know the turf um, but we did you know have this this option to compare this um, they did say that at uh, Woodridge they did have a number of um, things that they had to deal with on the front end 
um, with having some crumb rubber and they they have some flyers and things out and they do have to explain to people, although it, it, people have gotten used to the fact that they have the crumb rubber. Um, in Schaumburg, they went away from the crumb rubber because um, they said, you know what, there's this question about whether or not that's um, you know, safe for people or not, and they wanted to avoid that that issue or that concern, and so that was their perspective. That's why they didn't want to go there with the crumb rubber. Um, from our perspective, the way we kind of have been looking at this was because, you know, the olive pits are a, it's a natural product. It's a it's a little more of a sustainable option when we're looking at this whole package, um, and that we felt like this was something that you know, might be a better fit for the community as a whole. Um, and then as we were looking into it and getting into this, the fact that it, it is a little more play, it plays a little bit more like a regular grass field, really something that we like about it. So um, <clears throat> so overall, um, we are recommending uh, that we do move forward with the Pure Select, the ground olive pits with the cool play um, as our option for infill. Um, with that system, we do need to have an underlayment pad, um, and we had two options there. Um, one is the Brock pad, which is the expanded polypropylene, uh, um, or the Thermagreen pad, which is the post-industrial polyethylene. Um, the expanded polypropylene uh, is a product that's uh, more readily recyclable, and there are um, recyclable um, streams and paths for that currently whereas the um, uh, post-industrial polyethylene is a product where we would be saving it from um, its route to the, um, to the landfill currently and delaying its trip to the landfill essentially for about 20 years, uh, but it doesn't currently have a process in place for uh, recycling that's th that I'm aware of. Um, and so with that in mind and with the idea that also the Brock pad has a slightly um, better warranty on top of that we felt like overall the brock pad seems to make a better sense and we do appreciate and like that it's got a a more known and a, a more a solid um recyclability um in the long run um and in, in looking at this there was a question and something we had looked at about you know what the cost would be for recycling the artificial turf and and doing the recycling of the infill and, and this, this whole system um, and so what we found was that when I reached out to our rep, I asked him about that process and he indicated that um, the carpet that that's in there, the, the fibers of the grass, um, he says that they will take that back. That's now included in the cost, the purchase cost. So when it's time to replace it, um, we just let them know we want them to take it and recycle it and they will take it. Um, the, um, the infill product, if we have them come and take it and recycle it, they'll give us a 40 cents a square foot credit. And they'll send it to their facility to have it processed and reused for other things. So, um, so what we heard was that there was a, it was a budget neutral or better. Um, it'd be a cost savings for us uh, to have it recycled, at which point would be probably 10 years down the road. But, um, but for current day, that's what they're, what it would be at this time. So, um, so at this time, we're this this team was recommending that we go forward with the Pure Select, um, with Cool Play and the Brock Plaid, um, as part of the Oakton uh, indoor um, turf facility. I just add thank you, and that well, it's breaking. <laughs> uh, thank you to the team um, for going out and doing that extra work um, just to make sure that, you know, they actually felt the material, you know, the different material that I thought that was important. Um, and also this survey um, is attached um, that we sent out and we sent it to how many households, Margaret? It was a whole list of thousands, right? Yeah, everything we have after the last board meeting, I looked at it. It's about 8,000 houses. So and we got 77 back. Um, we were, did require people to watch the meeting. Um, but obviously the um, preferred of those 77 that went through that process, 77.92% um, said, um, you know, that they, they watched presentation. And then 78.13% um, said they're going to use the turf. And then the preferred one was the, um, you know, the one that staff is recommending, the peer select with the 
called pay, play pad, 53%. So I thought I'd also mention that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Any questions for Terry or any of us? Thanks for being so, oh, sorry. Ladies first. Well, I, I think we are on the same wavelength where I really appreciate the extra effort the staff took to look into these options and do a deeper dig on them. And I now understand and know more about this than <laughs> I anticipated, but I very much like the choices you made. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate, um, thanks for being so thorough about the process. Um, I want to just make a shout out to our citizens who are so vocal about this topic. You know, when we look at all of the various um, detrimental effects from the, that we're having on the environment, whether, you know, you've got higher reported uh, instances of allergies in our schools, whether it's more asthma, um, you know, being reported amongst, you know, people in all age groups, um, whether you know, there's just so many different things that we need to look at. And plastics is one of those, rubber's another. And this is, you know, obviously something that, you know, we uh, as members of rep representatives of the citizens, we need to be aware of these things. And it was a learning process, thanks to citizens who uh, spoke and uh, wrote um, to the board. So I want to say thank you for that. Uh, while I don't necessarily think this is the best option, it's better of um, than just relying on the standard um, approach that's always been uh, and taken. And hopefully we're also opening up other more environmentally friendly venues or companies that will start to look at this um, down the road. So thanks for your attention to this and being able to bring in all of the insight from the various uh, uh, citizens of Park Ridge for this. Sure. Thanks. Happy to do so. <coughs> Anything else? Sorry. Um, is uh, Park or the affiliates going to be using the turf field once it's up? Like we'll, we'll you're going to be the, doing programming, both will be doing programming and the affiliates, correct? Yes, correct. Have we asked the affiliates what they prefer? The affiliates were all part of the, yeah, so the affiliates were invited. Uh, some of them were at the meeting. I'm just wondering, like, as a group, as a collection, as a whole, has soccer come and said, yes, we like option one? Because I, we've got feedback from other affiliates from other parks. Yeah, I, I, I know both, yes. I know soccer is who we anticipate will probably be our largest user. They're definitely in favor on this. Uh, we heard from football was in favor on this. Um, baseball was okay with this as well. So For, for the option one? Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, second thing is uh, option two does not require the pad. Is the price, the 850 a square foot, that includes the pad? Correct. correct? Yep. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So the price difference comes out. It's like about, and I, I wasn't, part of this so i apologize if i don't know this it's like eighty thousand dollar <coughs> difference give or take correct all right yep mm -hmm. thank you yeah no problem anyone else uh, cindy i don't want to be a negative nancy i i am very surprised to hear about the recycling options that that they're going to pay us to recycle and um but i guess we'll find out yeah i i get it i understand Thank you, Superintendent Wolf. All right, um, going on to policy, Commissioner Grau. Um, nothing to report yet. <coughs> Jane, I'll turn it over to Intergovernmental. Is that Commissioner Holtain? It is Commissioner Holtain. Thank you, Commissioner Grau. I just have um, an informational thing tonight. Um, I sent an email to Gail and uh, President Tunnel knows about this and Commissioner Grau, I talked to her about it as well, but there was a Herald Advocate article about some citizens being concerned about the crosswalk at Northwest Highway and Glenview um, near Franklin School and Northwest Park. Um, and so I, you know, it was supposed to, there was something in the article that, imp that implied it would come back to council. So 
I reached out to Gail, and Gail talked to Sarah, and I guess it's going to come back to council on July 10th. Public Works and Sarah Mitchell, they're going to look into it and see what solutions might might be. This is um, Tom and Alana Sipa and other neighborhood neighbors up in that area, I guess, have been concerned about this intersection for a while. I think several years ago, someone actually got hit, like a parent and a child were crossing the street and got hit there. Um, I guess the city has put like one of those like um, they have them on Northwest Highway and Uptown like a little beacon and a sign in the middle of the street and it just keeps on getting hit over and over again because <laughs> people are um, going down Northwest Highway really fast and apparently not stopping for people and even when they're across guard so um, I'm going to just keep track of the situation. I'm glad that the city is looking into it. And I think um, I think my stance as a park commissioner is that I encourage the city to look for ways to make it safer um, for people to cross there. It impacts people getting to the school, and it impacts people getting to the parks. So um, hope, I hope to go to the July 10th meeting. I've swapped some emails with Tom. And I hope to, um, I'd like to actually meet up with him or whoever else and his wife at the crosswalk so they can just like talk through what their concerns are like in the place. So I just wanted to let um, folks know that I'm looking into this and you know, I know Commissioner Coyne and I talked about being concerned about folks crossing the street on Bussy Highway, getting to the, I watch people play Frogger to get over to the baseball Baseball fields like every day when I'm walking home from the train when I commute. So, and hopefully the Bussy Road diet would um, help ease that situation. So, just informational. I'm going to keep looking into it and see if there's some sort of resolution. Yeah. Is that one of those state roads? It's a state road. So, IDOT is. You know, IDOT has like a mapping exercise going on right now. They. Um, are taking input on um, unsafe intersections, and you can actually go in and mark, like you need a pedestrian facility or you need a bike facility or it's yeah. unsafe. And of course, when I found out about that, I marked up all of the places <laughs> in town, including this place. I marked up Bussy, but there are there are some intersections where it does impact people. Gripe about Devon and mm. getting to like from the south side of Devon, being able to access South Park. Um, there are crosswalks on Devon, and even crossing at Cumberland is not super comfortable. There are people turning and not looking to you. So um, I have gotten, you know, comments from folks from folks talking about this. But just informational. I'm going to keep track of it and learn more. Yeah, that's it. And I also have one other intergovernmental, if I could real quick. Um, we have been working on uh, Superintendent um, Armour and Wolf and I, um, the overriding District 64 agreement um, with the Park District that gives us use of their facilities. We mow their grass. Um, it was very outdated. Um, it's been worked on several times and then put to the side. But I'm happy to report that it should be in front of the school district um, board tonight. And so if all goes well, um, we'll see that at the July meeting for the board to approve. So. We mow some grass, right? Not all of it. We do not mow all the grass. But the grass. Yeah. No, right, some of it. <laughs> Terry's like, what? What did you put in that agreement? Like Wait, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Portions. Yeah. Right. I don't remember more than that. Yeah. We mow like the larger fields yeah. and things like that, but not up around the building and around the perimeters of the parks or their their fields, really. So, yeah. The maps will be in the agreement as an exhibit. But Gail, I do appreciate you reaching out to Sarah. I even think just reaching out to Sarah to know that this is on our radar, even that is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And she knows we're interested. So. Yeah. Yeah. Even that, I think, right. helps. Right. I will, um, 
Um, Gail, do you want to take, who takes communications and correspondence? Is that you or President Tunnel? I forget. I could take it. Res There's a um, <laughs> email from um, Resident Bertucci regarding the artificial turf. Um, I believe this is also emailed to the commissioners, but she requested that this be part of the public record. So that is what we have in communications and correspondence. Thank you. Is there uh, any new business? There is. Um, I had raised this with Gail and told you about this tonight. Um, back when I first started my on the park board, we did a lovely tour um, on one of the park district buses, the little buses of kind of going around and seeing all the different parks. And it was really kind of cool because I knew a lot of the major ones, especially for my son playing baseball. But there were a lot of the smaller ones that I really didn't know. And so I thought that maybe that, especially since we now have a few members of the board that were not on there. So yeah, I mean, the last time probably was about four years ago that we did that, um, that I thought it would be nice if maybe we did another little park tour. And I said, if everybody's up for it, we will plan it. <laughs> Heads up? Okay. All of them? No. Even Please. that little tiny one? Up well, well I mean, we, like we'll take special <laughs> requests. <laughs> like, but, yeah. like, Mary very cute. We just, <laughs> very cute. We just cruised by, but it was still, like, we didn't get out for every single one. There's 21 parks, so it depends how much time you want to spend. 138 but, acres. Right. But, I mean, we, we at least cruised by all of Did them. Did we go by all of them? We were pretty efficient, though, I feel like. It was a pretty cool. It was a we, went, we didn't let you sure. off the bus that much, but, yeah, no. We just got out for, like, the bigger ones, but it was kind of nice seeing where some yeah. of the littler ones were. I think it's a good idea, and just to see what we've done since then, you know, in some of these parks. There's so. probably, there have been a lot of changes. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, I mean, we're the, we're the park commissioners. We should know where all the parks are. <laughs> so, so is <laughs> July a good a, month? Do you call it a park crawl? <laughs> park crawl, Yes. <laughs> I this is a public, it is a uh, public official meeting. public meeting, so don't get any, you know. We have to be sober, but we can still have fun. <laughs> All right, so I take that as a yes. Um, I have one other item um, I forgot to mention um, in my report. I guess I had a couple things to say. Um, I, I put this in one of my Friday reports that um, we'll be attending, um, Mary Beth and I, at the IAPD efficiency webinar um, to talk all about our 19 page report that we're gonna to put together for um, the efficiency, uh, how efficient we are at the park district. My plan is after that, um, I'll consult with um, President Tunnel, but I wanna get this done and I'd like to schedule the meetings um, because the whole board has to be part of the committee. So I'll plan on doing it like right before, you know, the, this is my idea, like three of our meetings, right? So we're not doing a whole nother meeting and I'll bring you sections of what you know we've put together for the report and then the board can ask questions on it sound good can't wait right does it have to be 19 pages no i'm i'm being a little facetious <laughs> okay. with that but that's the, the to write 19 yeah pages. <laughs> it's like a term paper but no the um <laughs> that is what the um sample okay. one is that they've put together at iapd so when are you thinking of the first meeting? This summer or fall? I, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. But, um, we, TBD. We get busy in the fall with budget. We'll probably do one in August if you want. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. Give okay. me a goal of getting a third of it written. <laughs> the webinar is June 27th at 11 a.m. Oh, yeah. Did I not mention that? It's in yeah. your IAPD email. Right. It's in your email. So. People are... That said, anybody's welcome to join us at the. I'm fascinated with this requirement. I don't know why. Well. You're welcome to join the webinar. I second. It is intergovernmental. That's right. <laughs> and policy, maybe. Any other new business to you? New business, new business, new business. Um, I actually have some new business. And I, I think since we're taking a stroll down memory lane, I'm going to stroll over here and I'd like to invite you to join me. <laughs> I have two weeks I can do this. <laughs> 
As a small business owner, I would really appreciate if I had a dollar for every time you re reminded me to do that <laughs> in the last four years. But um, I, I will say first, it's an honor to be able to to do this. Um, I remember that spot really well when I first came to um, have the honor to serve the community. And uh, you're right there. And um, I think it was almost like Christmas Eve. So the two of us were here at Christmas Eve. And I know you've been an integral part of the whole board, um, this board, and we appreciate you and everything you do. If I can get through all these words without crying, uh, it will be a, an honor. But um, tonight, we're taking a moment to honor someone very special at the Park District, uh, Marianne Lucars. Uh, you're retiring from the Park District on June 29th after serving the, as the uh, district's executive administrative assistant for the past 22 years and working in the field of parks and recreation for 35 years. Um, Marianne has been such an integral part of the park district, it's hard to know where to begin. Thank goodness for all the words, right? <laughs> um, uh, Marianne is the executive director's ex executive assistant, which you can imagine is a big and often challenging job. <laughs> She's also responsible for the Board of Park Commissioners official communications, assists the district superintendents. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, over her 22 years uh, with the Park District, you have worked with 39 commissioners, three executive directors, and numerous other staffs. And a well-known secret, you even used to have a badge, which is pretty cool. <laughs> still have it. Um, I, I can't imagine a board meeting without you. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll get back to it. But um, it's going to be hard not to say, Marianne. Can you help me out here? Um, you, you've been, th there's a lot of people when they walk out on a, a journey in life, you want to feel that um, you left on your own terms and people didn't weren't mad at you. I know that you're probably mad at me a lot and you would like me to go, but you're walking away with a, a legacy and you've helped build this park district to what it is. So um, back to the script, sorry. Um, if uh, you, you'd probably be on the camera saying, get a second, call for a voice vote, push the red button, make sure it's on. <laughs> uh, you've attended over 400 board meetings. And to staff's memories, which thank God we have them because mine's bad, um, you only missed two meetings in 22 years. That's amazing. About. About. You've missed very few out of 400, so that's pretty amazing. Um, as the election officer, uh, when many of us board members were first uh, coming aboard, we got to meet you. Um, what you don't realize sometimes is why other people are off on Christmas Eve enjoying time with their families. There she was, first remote worker we had right there. <laughs> Not in your own spot, remote here. Um, snow time away from the family. I think Christmas Eve, you probably won't be coming by here, I assume. <laughs> um, we appreciate your commitment to the election process because it's, it's a foundation for what makes this happen, so thank you. Um, you had the awesome, awesome responsibility to be the district's FOIA uh, officer, which so many responses to the many requests that you received throughout the years, quite a few. Um, lots of hours, a lot of coordination with staff, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, managing the bid process for the district, um, from time to time we like to buy things and do things and you've been there. Um, hundreds of bids of capital and operational improvements have fallen on your desk and you were there. Um, in addition to the numerous requests for proposals, agreements for the district. Uh, your longevity <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. yeah and I don't I mean that sincerely that I came know. out like uh, if I can't get through this I'm gonna cry so I'm just gonna <laughs> keep going but your 
invaluable in reviewing and assisting with updating policies and agreements, including the board policy, conduct ordinance, administrative policy, and affiliate agreements. Um, when you get requests from the public, received by phone, email, or occasional drop-in, sometimes people might not be so happy. You've handled them professionally and with you represented the Park District very well. Um, you always are calm, which most of the time. I mean, I... <laughs> 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 um, you also worked in communication with the Park District's attorney, whether it's regular board meeting topics, FOIA requests, agreements, bids, or more, to work through the issues and you help interpret the next step. Um, chances are, if, a wel if, you, if, if welcoming a new staff member, um, the annual staff picnic, or playing other staff members' retirement recognition as needed, uh, you help coordinate the event. Uh, you give your personal touch to each, making them memorable for those involved. We hope you're doing well with um, her retirement recognition without having to help. So hopefully you didn't have to plan the party and type this. <laughs> this. <Very> so, <laughs> um, In 22 years, you've seen a lot of change at the Park District. Lots of capital pro projects, two successful referendums, numerous grants. Uh, board members, co-workers come and go, and through it all, you've been there. Um, while we touch on a lot of your larger duties, it's really impossible to name everything that you've done for us. And I'm just going to end it at that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all the kind words. And I really think, um, thank you guys, all, everybody, because uh, I never thought I was ever going to get to this point. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to break down either. But um, I'm really excited about retirement. And I'm ready to move on and spend time with my family and my friends and so forth. But thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And Mary Beth is going to do a great job. It really, she really is. So I appreciate it. Thank you. June 29th, uh, yes, from 4 to 7. Yeah, so. And we have some light refreshments here if you can stay for some treats. Um, but uh, you do have to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> if Marianne taught me nothing. <laughs> yeah. I move to adjourn the meeting of Park, <laughs> of the Board of Park Commissioners. <laughs> May we have it all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Good night. Good night.